Thank, Thank you. you. Um, the next item on the agenda is ah, the Mayor's monthly report. Uh, and I've taken the opportunity to uh, create a couple of um, delegations uh, because uh, timing of meetings are such that it would be useful to delegate decisions to uh, the Finance and Performance um, Committee and uh, also um, uh, for uh, yeah, so so um, item four, it's written as an approval, but it's actually a delegation as well. That recommendations from the council organisation appointments panel um, can be referred to the next committee of the whole meeting or council, where a full delegation can be exercised to make the final appointment. So, um, and the idea for that is is that there are some trusts and organisations that we appoint to that have to have the appointments made for a um, November meeting. Um, oh, sorry, no, yeah, it must be November. Yeah, so so that it can go to the next committee of the whole. Um, in order to get it through. So wh whichever one comes up first, mm -hmm. um, there's November and December. I think some have meetings in December as well. So uh, it's just to get things through in time. The first one is the CCHL appointments. This enables a new, um, new council directors to be uh, formally appointed in time to participate in the December meeting. And the, the, um, the third recommendation, which is just simply uh, um, and, uh, the authority to appoint membership of the um, Council's Multicultural Advisory Group to the Multicultural Committee, um, as it's now referenced, uh, is just simply an oversight in the terms of reference, so it should have been included in the first place. So um, I, um, I'm, I'm, well, no. And then I've got my entire report, which is on a separate document, so I'll just introduce that. Um, Sorry, I didn't have it open. Council open. Um, and you'll see that I've taken the opportunity to change the way that the monthly report is uh, is established. Um, it, well, is written. So, and and that's by looking at the things that I've done over the month, and just to see whether there are some themes that have come out. Uh, and uh, the, the, the first theme uh, came from the launch of the University of Canterbury's strategic vision, and there were three words that, uh, that um, sort of uh, entitled their, their vision, and they were engaged, empowered, making a difference. And when we looked at the, well, in my view, when we look at the opportunity to partner uh, with our district and, and regional councils, our Papatipu Runanga and Te Runanga Onaitahu working in collaboration with UC, you can see some incredible opportunities. And even with the young people from uh, from uh, college, you know, uh, Christ College this morning, that that there was very much uh, in line with what I'm talking about there, and that's that intersection between education and research. Uh, and uh, and what that can do for our city, um, and this the strategic vision aligns incredibly well with our international relations strategy, uh, with the internationalisation, locally engaged and globally networked, uh, with education being accessible, flexible, and future focused, and research looking for impact in a changing world. Um, and for me, there were a lot of things that I went to over the month that really. Um, confirmed that this is the direction that we need to be heading in as a city as a whole, not um, in terms of our individual silos across different agencies or different organisations. So the National Lifeline Utilities Forum, although uh, they all came together to look at essential utilities in a, a lifelines context, uh, I was invited to speak about the importance of community being at the heart of all planning and decision making. Whether you're talking about hard infrastructure or whether you're talking about building community resilience, it all starts and ends with the community and if it's not about um, communities, it's not about anything that particularly matters. Um, the Aerospace Challenge Awards Ceremony, well, the, you saw the impact of what 
uh, that is capable of producing. Um, I'm actually going to go and visit Sequent, who won the um, uh, the award this year, uh, and uh, um, we'll let you know when it is. So um, you're all welcome to attend as well. It's um, they're, they're an incredible company, uh, homegrown, and uh, but a, a really important and significant company in, in terms of its um, uh, technologies. Uh, I went to a panel discussion on a future for women in STEM, which is science, technology, education and mathematics, engineering and mathematics. Um, there's a lot of people who says that the A is missing, missing. it should be STEAM, not STEM, um, arts, and I agree with them, I think it should be. But, uh, you know, to have a former NASA astronaut, um, a marine biologist, a, a chemist and a vaccine developer and um, expert in biochemistry um, talk about what brought them into non-traditional fields, you can immediately see a connection around the engaged, empowered, making a difference um, theme and, uh, you know, women talking to younger women in particular and giving them the inspiration for taking on some of these non-traditional challenges, I think, uh, was it was an inspirational event and... Um, and Joanna Norris chaired it uh, from Christchurch NZ, so it was it was a really good evening. Um, and the engaged, empowered, making a difference, I've seen that from a community perspective as well. Imagine if all of our communities felt engaged, empowered, in making a difference. And the point that I'm making in my report is that communities do feel uh, well, can can be engaged, and and we can help them be engaged. They can be empowered, and we can help them be empowered. But in terms of making a difference, that's that's really for communities. You know, they need to want to make a difference, and uh, we just need to be an enabler and a facilitator, sitting in the background and really letting communities thrive. And when I when I, I actually this was a bit of a talk that I gave over in Perth. Uh, which I'll report on next month, but it, on the same day that I was speaking in Perth, Andrew was receiving the dollar coin from uh, the, Bay the Governor's Bay Jetty Trust uh, for the transfer of the Governor's Bay Jetty, and so I was able to, and I already had that in my, in my presentation about an example of communities being um, you know, empowered to really do their own thing and how much more value came from communities doing their own fundraising and their own uh, connections and their own, you know, I mean, I just said it was a community that was on fire, really, because of what they were enabled to do. And I said, and today's the day that the dollar's being handed over and, and, um, and received by the council. Um, and, but it also raises this issue of diversity because our communities are quite different. If we look across them, they're geographically different. The interests that bring communities together, they're different. And uh, there are other identity issues that bring people together um, that are different as well. Difference isn't the problem. Um, it's, it's actually how people are treated, whether people are are felt to be prejudiced against or whether they're um, treated as, as um, equal, you know, uh, equal partners, equal participants and with equal rights, you know, um, and, and there is an equity issue in there as well, uh, which often doesn't get called out in the issue of, uh, in discussions about equal, um, so equal and equitable are two different concepts, but they, they're on the same spectrum. Diversity is something that does highlight all of those many and varied neighbourhoods and uh, communities that represent identity, culture or interest. And, um, and March 15 has asked me how genuinely appreciative and welcoming we are of diversity in all of its forms. And I think this is the challenge that we do need to take on this term and it's something that I'm really, really happy to lead on. Uh, we went to a lessons learned workshop. Uh, one of the people from the NHS came over, or the NHS Foundation, uh, following on from Grenfell Tower. Um, and uh, she, her talk was how the community taught us to support them. And uh, it just reinforced everything that we already know 
about the importance of listening to communities before acting. Um, and, uh, and I thought it was a, a really powerful presentation um, and how communities are not systems to be managed by um, organisations, but they're individuals with both strengths and needs. They're made up of individuals who have both strengths and needs. Um, but if you don't start with defining the strengths and you go straight to that uh, deficit model, then you end up um, in, a, in a sort of a, a downward spiral. And then the last one that I'll just mention, because um, as I say, my front page is a bit different from the standard, uh, honestly sharing the stories of our people, that was the most inspiring event that I went to. I mean, I just went to inspiring events um, since the election, which is really great. Uh, but this is a collaborative venture where essentially um, photographers and storytellers come together to collect and share stories of people in their community. Um, and the only reason I found out about it was because uh, Kate Grace was one of the inaugural Christchurch Foundation Women's Award winners, and, uh, and, and the Women's Award's been established for actively leading change in the community, and she was one of the inaugural winners. Can you, sorry, I'm not going into the second page, it's just um, events. So, uh, and I just, um, I just wanted to call this one out because uh, we've got a, um, it, it, yeah, what it does is it, it talks about um, uh, listening, storytelling, the importance of storytelling, and we need to be thinking about that too, um, embracing diversity and heritage. So it tied in with Heritage Week, uh, and it was, um, it was an incredibly powerful and moving experience, and you'll see Neil Macbeth right there in the middle, um, who does all the photography for our citizenship ceremonies, um, and uh, the photographs are awesome. So you're all welcome to go onto the website, uh, and if you think of people that whose stories should be told as part of this, I've already sent them one name, um, actually one of the candidates from the mayoral campaign, who I thought had a story that was worth telling, um, and uh, that's that's uh, that's something that I, I was really inspired by, but it just goes into that engaged, empowered, making a difference. So, Yanni. Yeah, um, there's a number of links in your report which we can't access. I was just wondering if maybe we could just get them circulated separately. Sure. Like the Grenfell Tower. Yep. Um, just, just thinking of what you've talked about in terms of community resilience, um, nothing about us without us, um, the community being at the heart of all the planning and decision making. Do you have any thoughts on things that you would like council to consider doing um, differently this term than previous terms to address some of those th themes that you're raising? Yes. <laughs> would they be? Would you like to well, give us some ideas? I want, to, I want us to explore those ideas with our communities. So, um, the, I mean, obviously the, the long-term plan process is going to be an element of that, but I also want us to be linking in with other organisations, you know, like the DHB, like the University of Canterbury, um, and, uh, and also uh, connecting with our own organisations, Christchurch NZ um, in particular, and, and thinking uh, across Christchurch. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do we um, utilise um, all that each one of us does in order to make impact for the city as a whole and empower communities? So um, I always think of, uh, and I know that we've made small strides in this area, but instead of, um, you know, I've, I've made the point many times, uh, and I always use the Littleton Project and the Aranui Community Trust as my two shining examples of what I'm talking about. So um, in Littleton, you do not need to have a civil defence volunteer um, group. You don't need one because they have the Littleton project and they have a Littleton time bank. So a uh, Banks Peninsula time bank. So you don't need to have a, um, uh, you don't need an imposed process from the outside going into that community because that community has self-organised um, it's the same with Aranui. They've um, got the Aranui Community Trust. Yes, it was uh, established initially by grants from central government, 
uh, but a signed partnership between central government, uh, local government and the community has enabled that community to take uh, control of its own destiny and is able to input into a, a large number of things. Now, now that, th those, those communities are way more engaged with each other and connected with each other um, than, than other communities that might be seen to be more um, wealthy uh, from a financial point of view, but people don't even know their neighbours. So, um, and, and, and don't have community events that bring people together. I can think of plenty of community events that bring people together. The um, uh, Culture Galore, which is two community boards coming together to fund uh, the um, support that's required to bring those two communities together. So there's lots of different things, but I want us to be thinking about that across the whole city and not just in the pockets that have managed to develop these things for themselves. And you will all be now thinking of why didn't she mention such and such in my patch because I know exactly what she's talking about. So I want us to bring all of those to the table and to start working out how we work in a much more open and collaborative way with our communities. So that's what I'm talking about. Thank you. Jimmy Chen, thank you. Seconded by Sarah Templeton. I shall put the motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried.